one of these great men created in Furore, the legal profession. Sadly, a lot of the informed people celebrated their entrance without appreciating the implications of exiting the best grades in the profession without any semblance of due process. The careers of these judges were determined by men who were at best education educating his challenge. It was acutely awful that lawyers did not foresee the effect of this action. It's an action that ushered in the decline of the legal profession. It scared many outstanding lawyers who had given us time to dishevel appointment. For their weather is doubt, a legal system that cannot structure itself in a manner that only the very gifted lawyers aspire to judicial appointment cannot provide justice according to law. The legal profession of such a country will not deliver justice for populism. The retirement of Saga in 1905 of judicial officers is clear to me, very clear to me, at a very early age, that the only class scholarship in the midst of abundant mediocrity was the mortal sin. Appointment of judges from the bar to the Supreme Court. The recent outcry that senior members of Nigeria should be considered for appointment for the Supreme Court is not the solution to the problem of the country. It may even end up compounding the problem. All judges should be outstanding. The high court, from the High Court to the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court should be manned by gifted lawyers. Appointing lawyers directly to the Supreme Court without very demoralizing effect on those outstanding lawyers who are chosen to go to the High Court with the expectation that they will commercially be elevated to the higher benches. This fact that you, the fact that you're a lawyer doesn't necessarily mean you will be an exceptional will be exceptional as a Supreme Court judge. The protagonists of these proposals mention some names that have made it to the Supreme Court directly from the back, like Dr. Tassi Medias. You heard his curricula, you heard what he was. An exception being made for him was not out of place in the most first time he was. Another judge that has been appointed directly to the Supreme Court the Justice Jonathan Sumption. Jonathan Sumption took a first class degree in modeling in the medieval history of Oxford University. He was fellow of modeling college in Oxford. He has been described as a brain of Britain. His knowledge and grasp of the law is demonstrably intimidating. His direct appeal to the Supreme Court was as accepted as an appropriate recognition for his quality brain. These are the category of men who can make a claim to direct and promote the Supreme Court. They come once in a lifetime. This upstep by jump is no meant for every pedestrian advocate who has nothing to show that a prolonged stay in the court would raise a lack of distinction. If you are considered, if you are considered so gifted, an exception can be made for a few appointments in the court of appeal, where if you now distinguish yourself, you can be given an accepted promotion. It should be noted that since the passing of the reform of the judicial system in England and the replacement of the House of Lords by the Supreme Court of England, Justice Sumption's appointment is the first appointment to be made directly from the bar to the highest bench. The highest Jinodu Saka. I cannot end the discussion of the ruling era in the Nigerian legal system without mentioning the stance taken by Honorable Justice Yaya at Belgium in 1984. Besides, not to had issued an order against the permanent secretary of peace of internal affairs. He had expected the referee of the Attorney General to file returns on the issue. This representative refused to. After repeated warnings, just you know, he thought it was appropriate to discipline the man. He requested that he should go into the box without looking at them. The authorities felt that just you know, and they were scared of his bounds. 
and as punishment for his behavior, he had to apologize to the judicial authorities in the presence of the staff of the Ministry of Justice. Chino would not have this. In his view, it was not only an attempt to humiliate him, but actually a design to denigrate the profession he so loved, he chose to retire. In my tribute on his 19th birthday, I said, in 1984, you chose to retire most eventually from the esteemed position of the High Court of Lagos State. Rather than allow the institution to be related, you quit your job and face the very uncertain future because of your genuine belief that the integrity of the judiciary should not be compromised. Your letter of resignation read as follows. I believe the judiciary has a broader role to play in the country as is the last group of the common mind. The judiciary has to be firm and courageous and will not employ any form of double standards. I cannot be a part of the relation and disgrace of the judiciary. And on no condition, as no condition is permanent, I have not the only honorable thing to do for a reasonable, upright, and disciplined job to do. I have already given notice of my retirement of service. I cannot condemn any attempt to destroy the judicial system in this country using that as a big boost in other kinds of rights. That's the mind for. Today, at the rate of 90, you can confidently look back and say, Did I not warn you? Your detractors have now seen the effect of not standing up for the truth and justice with other people you have demonstrably served for continuing to die. You are right. I am very proud to be related to you. I should mention, I repeat that the actions were appropriate and consistent with a high level of integrity. I submit that the profession betrayed one of its own by not rising up in unison to condemn the simulation of a confident and principled member of the profession. Was well, just if not, not right. I do not see how the legal profession has been consistently battered by those in authority. He worked collectively to ensure that justice was done. The state of the legal profession will have been different than it is today. I should mention that Mr. Kelly Joshua was a very close friend and confident of Mr. Joseph Newton, both men of principle. The jurisdiction of the federal high court. The United States Constitution ushered in the presidential system of government. This was a marked departure from the parliamentary system of government and the military director. A federal high court was created with defined jurisdiction as stated in Section 2, that is of the Constitution. In 1999, the new federal jurisdiction was confirmed by Section 251 of the Constitution. The dichotomy of the judiciary of the federal high court means that the high court has structured the Nigerian court from inception till today. It is a sad commentary of the Nigerian legal system that the legal profession that, has, that this issue has not been properly defined in such a manner that it does not constitute a death knell for a lot of serious disputes. There are extreme contradictions in decided cases about the jurisdiction of the federal high court, these are the state high courts, leading to injustice or justice being kept in our hands. Two cases decided within one week of the other by the Supreme Court highlight graphically the unresolved problems of the dichotomy between federal and state high courts. In Fash Akin Foods, Nigeria Limited, the full court of the Supreme Court held that under Section 22 of Section 3 of the Federal High Court law, state high court will not transfer to Federal High Court. In a student distant house, as a Madrid trustee, the court held that state high court could transfer the case from the High Court to Federal High Court. These two cases were decided within a week of each other. 
and there were judges on panel A and also on panel B. I happen to have been the lawyer in the second case. In the state high court, the matter had been transferred to the federal high court. We objected to court refused. We went to the court of appeal. The Court of Appeal, in the considered ruling presided over by Judge Anishad of Italy, found for us. In the Supreme Court, the court said no. And I was there aghast. It was only one week ago that I said yes. But what is more alarming was the comments of the judge. In, um, in um, denigrating what I did, the court said as follows. Well. The respondents more or less strove to convert the courts into a vandal of legal playhouse by using a line and embarking on all sorts of subtleties and medical plan, proceeding to circumvent all the issues before the court, which has whether or not the Papalan company is locked up to the respondent company. The legal gymnastics employed by the Respondents to have a roller coaster rule right and in seeking to use the process of the courts to put the appellant in the woods through ingenious as we appear is to my mind both unethical and inconsiderate as it fails to respond to the appellant's case or attend to the matter in issue if the appellant cannot be policed in federal high court and at the same time cannot be policed in the legal high court. Which court would the action be then commence if it is a case of such welcome and unwelcome news at once? It is too hard to reconcile Shakespeare and Macbeth. With respect to the court, should have no support either in legal authorities or reason. The only authority cited was Macbeth. <laughs> but the issues were more fundamental than that. They were conceptual. The problem with the appellant's case was the appellant that made the error of combining the issue of mortgage and an issue related to the Financial Institution Act in a course of action that could not be sustained jointly in any of the courts. The juxtaposition of the relief created a situation not contemplated by the Constitution. This case provided an opportunity for defying the relative jurisdiction of the federal and state court post-1999 constitution. The opportunity was not utilized, and until date, this issue continues to confuse citizens and produce results that are not compatible with the ideal of resolving the substance of issues. Most cases are won or lost at the threshold point. According to the editor of the Nigerian Monthly Law Report, over 60% of cases in the courts are decided on procedure and not any substance of law. This is a sad reflection on the development of Nigerian law. We have to be able to get to the substance of the issue. When all the cases are decided at the threshold case, oh, did you go to the right court? Did you not come to the right court? Did you um, find the right process? We are not ventilating issues. We are only playing games. There's an area I'd like to discuss with the state but we will take too much time. And in different to Sergei Kado, I will postpone it to another day. But I can give you an highlight. It is the administration of the Ampon rules. I will discuss it some other day. The way forward. I have no doubt that my presentation will have dampened the enthusiasm of members of the profession about the hopes and future of this legal profession in Nigeria. I must certainly state that this is not the intention. I have only identified the issues to enable us to realize the enormity of the problem as far as for us to have a holistic solution to it all. It's too late to blame anybody for where we have found ourselves. Such approach would be counterproductive. The appropriate position 
is to argue that the way this that we have to reduce. One, we have to make the study of law a very serious business. The current quality of teaching is simply not good enough. The lecturers are highly integrated. I believe this area will soon be solved. The federal government of Nigeria has shown good faith by setting up the committee to review the 2009 agreement with the various unions in the university. Coincidentally, I'm the chairman of the committee. We can all join hands in putting forward proposals for the advancement of tertiary education in Nigeria. It might be the University of Lagos. Our tutorial class was made of about 10 students. This was considered too large. I remember my big auntie and teacher, Dr. Dari Salah Adnani, later Dr. Adnani, complaining that she could not properly provide tutorials for an unruly class of 10 students. Some grown young people I'm acquainted with regularly tell me that they attended tutorials over 100 students in the class. This cannot be the source of any proper data education. Serious countries with considerable advanced care system take education very seriously. Till I left Cambridge in 1986, a tutorial class in law was one student, one tutorial master, for one hour. In such an environment, even if your brain were made of sawdust, you are bound to learn something. Appointment for bench. Must be based on merit. Law is essentially the profession that requires very serious intellectual capacity. The various levels of court must look up to the court higher than them in the hierarchy. The argument that you offend federal character is a non starter. I've been to every part of Nigeria, I've visited every state, I've worked in every state. Every corner of Nigeria has very outstanding people and they should be identified and appointed. I want to highlight a comparison today with the state of the um, Supreme Court in England and the Supreme Court in United States. Who are the members of the Supreme Court in England? The non manga of Apple Spring, Christ College of Baroness Hale, Cambridge University. Lord Morris, University College of Oxford. Lord Kerr, Queen's University of Belfast. Lord Clark, Oxford University. Lord Wilson, University College of Oxford. Lord Sumption, Modern College of Oxford. Lord Conwood, Trinity College. Lord Hughes, Oxford University. And Lord Paul, President of my own law society, Oxford University College in there are over a hundred universities in England. Only two universities have produced 95 percent of the judges in the school. It is not an error. It is that the system has been designed to ensure that only those of capacity end up with the bench and fortuitous accidents or paraventure. The current justice of the United States Supreme Court are John Roberts, Harvard Law School, Anthony Kennedy, Stanford University, Clarence Thomas, Yale University, Ruth Barman Gisborne, Columbia University, Stephen Pryor, Harvard Law School, Samuel Alito, Yale Law School, Sona Tomtayo, Yale Law School, and Elena Kaga, Harvard Law School. All the judges of the Supreme Court in the United States double as professors of law in the neighboring universities. The Chief Justice is an adjunct professor of Georgetown University. It is only in Nigeria that I am told that practice is different from academics. Practice is only different from academics because we are not practicing. These judges appointed in England and the United States have been appointed by leaders of very different intellectual and political backgrounds. Yet they have had a common objective in appointing well educated and exceptionally qualified personnel to occupy this position. This country to realize that you cannot bring the judicial process in the hands of less qualified people. As 
an apostle repeated, there is no difference between an incompetent judge and a corrupt judge. The effect of incompetence and corruption in the legal system is the same, the justice. And only yesterday, the Judicial Appointment Commission issued a statement in England and they tried to fill some positions, but they have not even found enough key seats, qualified enough to be high court judges. And they said, the judge is highly determined not to reduce its standards. It cannot fill all the vacant posts. The high court will have to rely on some part time judges, either practitioners or certain judges. Some of them will be good, but others will not. Unless those applicants are the legal minds to the judges, we won't lower our standards. It was only yesterday. They are not saying that there is a vacancy less in it. Let me tell you the corollary of having a very good bench. Let me look at that. The corollary to this is that the judge will pay the living wage. The living wage today, in my view, is not less than two thousand dollars per annum. This pay should also be indexed linked to inflation. In 1964, the Nigerian judiciary earned the living wage. If that pay had been indexed linked to inflation, as done in the United States of America, we would not have had most of the problems we've had with judges having to make case for increase in salary. When I was sitting there, my friend who had gone knows that. And they say to me, oh, I'm taking care of my church. I feel so insulted. <laughs> because the question I was born into, no governor was like that. No governor thought he was doing the church with him. The church was on his friend pedestal. He owed no governor any, any obedience. Cases must go on. Adjournment must be discouraged. Law firms must grow large enough to have enough capacity within them to cope with the briefs they have accepted. The courts must not adjourn any case for the convenience of counsel. As a corollary, the courts must be ready to proceed with the matter on the day they are stated for. Um, I've been to court one day. I don't know if I went to the Latin village, so I went to the Bushu I don't remember. And there was an incident in the court of the day. Only a lot of new cousin was presiding. And uh, the lawyer on the other side had done something um, the family had said to him. The date was job for vacation in July. The justice cousin said, We're going to give you a punitive adjournment. We're going to adjourn you to November. And what's punitive about that? We're going on holiday in July. We're coming back in September. They are giving us punitive to. November. Today, they give you a judgment. Oh, yes, yeah, God. <laughs> the presence of a highly motivated and properly incentivized bench will lead to the development of a judicial system that is able to grant issues spontaneously and decide from the of them. The idea of a judge to deliver rulings on interpretation matters that do not raise any novel points of law is unacceptable. It creates unnecessary delay in the system. Prosecution of criminal cases should only take place after a thorough investigation and review of the evidence by very soon legal practitioners. Poor prosecution of cases has a strong negative effect on the profession. It gives an impression that there is an disclosed agenda in the institution of criminal cases. It does not appear that the focus is to achieve conviction and pronounce the law. The idea that the prosecution will seek to adjust the child of the case because it requires more time to adduce or compile evidence was very strict to those who are familiar with the operation of the common law in the prosecution of criminal cases. The discipline of judicial officers must be done in a very transparent manner. The NGC has come a long way in the process, but it still has a long way to go. We should have a system that is capable of showing up an incompetent or corruption without much ado. 
this is a good intellectual work. I will end this by thanking the Chocolat family. You have chosen the right way to remember your great father. You are a father to all of us. But let me assure you, you still have more to do. We have to turn all stumbling blocks to step in stone. But we are taking the future high.